Whistleblowers are like canaries in the mine. They send us warning signals to expose injustice and abuse. Without them, we often wouldn't know what governments are doing in our name and the crimes that are being committed on our behalf. Whistleblowing is pretty important for investigative journalism because a lot of the information that we want to get isn't officially released and even if you make uh, freedom of information requests uh, a lot of the information is so sensitive that um, the, the powers that be will do everything they can to shut it down. What he did was he was it right or wrong? Well I have not the slightest doubt it was terribly wrong, very dangerous and will have put people's lives at risk. Edward Snowden has performed a great public service. He has defended the public interest against an overbearing state that is spying on citizens when it has no right to do so. Is he a whistleblower or is he guilty of the most serious criminal espionage? The answer is probably both. He is a whistleblower and I quite believe that he had the intention of bringing to public notice uh, internet uh, interception by the US National Security Agency and by Britain's GCHQ. At the same time, what was discovered on the hard drive of Mr Miranda, the partner of the journalist most closely concerned, was 58,000 top secret British intelligence documents. That makes him, if it is Mr Snowden who acquired these and I can't see where else they came from, that makes him guilty of really very serious espionage. It is quite absurd for the United States government to treat Edward Snowden as a spy. Quite clearly he has never been in any contact with any foreign intelligence agencies or governments. He's not sought to financially benefit in any way. He's not driven by an ideological commitment to another nation or another uh, series of ideas other than the principles of open, transparent and accountable government. They should be responsible so that judgments can then be made. Is there something that needs to be put into the public domain or is that person wrong in thinking that? That's, a, that's what a, a responsible person, a decent person, does. But when you simply uh, download tens of thousands of secret documents and give them away to uh, newspapers, for all we know, Mr Snowden, when he was in Moscow, may have been giving them to the Russian government. <laughs> I don't know. He's a complicated case, but as all whistleblowers are, actually, you know, there's very few that are just, you know, these amazing paragons of, of virtue and who do everything right. You know, they're human, they make mistakes. But... Uh, I think he's shown that one person can make such an amazing, I mean just an astounding difference. If you think about all the hundreds of thousands of people that work uh, in intelligence work and there's just, just this one guy and what an amazing difference he's made to our whole understanding about surveillance. <laughs> Internet is the biggest uh, technological change and that's impacted whistleblowers and the way that we as journalists um, get information. So on, on one hand, uh, it makes it a lot easier for all different people to put their information into the public domain. So, you know, we get a lot more uh, voices in, um, you know, it's not just the kind of specific professional journalists giving us one version of the news, we get a, a whole variety of people talking. For us, an anonymous is an option for an individual, but we normally say it's an option of last resort. If someone doesn't know who you are and the public don't know who you are, how can anyone protect you? It is an important route and it's absolutely vital that individuals are able to do it if they need to get information out where it is not safe for them to do in any other environment. But I don't want to live in a world where people need to be anonymous and hide behind these kinds of things. On the other hand, uh, I think there's always been this mistaken idea that you can be a totally anonymous and protected on the internet. And in actual fact, it's very, very difficult, almost impossible, to remain anonymous. Um, there is comprehensive uh, legislation in the UK 
um, that protects individuals across sectors, but it doesn't protect people in the national security services. It doesn't protect individuals that are disclosing information that would be covered by an act such as the Official Secrets Act. So those individuals are, are vulnerable if they're left in a position where they see information that truly worries them and they think it's in the public interest to disclose. <laughs>to my mind, The Guardian has published responsibly. They've looked at everything that they've published. They haven't put anything into the public domain that they haven't scrutinized themselves. And they've gone to uh, the relevant authorities asking them um, if they have specific comments and they can prove that you know anything in the information is going to be uh, harmful to national security. There's a, there's a real difference, I've noticed, when you get information related to security agencies in Britain or America. So in America, you, you can definitely have some kind of dialogue with those agencies. In fact, those agencies, the FBI, the CIA, the NSA, they're all covered by the Freedom of Information Act. In Britain, they're not, and they're, they're totally uh, sort of a wall around these agencies as if they're the word of God, and you, know, you, can't, you, can't, um, you can't question them at all. Heather Brooks is completely wrong. And she knows perfectly well that we've had, uh, for the last 60 or 70 years in this country, a, sis a voluntary system whereby the newspapers know who to ring up in order to check out a story, to check whether it might be damaging. It's still up to the newspaper what they print. We have a free press. There is no censorship. But they have the ability to check out a story. And the newspapers with a story like Snowden, that's exactly what they do. They don't always follow the advice that they're given. That's their, their right as, as journalists. The nature of, of, of what needs to be done to keep our society safe does not need to be kept secret. Uh, we can have a good debate about privacy about the limits of privacy and about what it takes in an internet age to track down the communications of terrorists, of serious criminals. The so exact sources and methods used by the police service and by the intelligence agencies have to remain secret because the very people that they are trying to track down are very interested in how they might be tracked down. We shouldn't have had to wait for Edward Snowden to blow the whistle. We should have been told. There should have been debates in the US Congress and debates in the British Parliament before this surveillance program was agreed. I think we all heard the person on the street that said, well, what does it matter if they can see what I'm doing? It, I'm not up to no good. But it's really not whether you're up to no good, it's whether you're up to something that the, those in power don't like. So the computers are programmed, they remove these emails from the vast majority of others which are never looked at and are never examined. So no human eye has ever looked at 99.999% of all these communications. When you get this tiny number, which have something in them that suggests they might be to do with terrorism, even then, if the intelligence agencies want to look at the content of an email that someone has written or a telephone conversation that they have uh, taken part in, they have to put an application to the, uh, to the Minister, the Secretary of State, explaining in some detail why they have a reason to believe this needs to be done, and only if that is agreed do they have the legal right to do it. And even once they've done it, retrospectively, the intelligence commissioners who are judges 
will look back at the permissions that were given to make sure it was done properly. And of course, with the modern internet, with Skype, with social media messaging, you need to have something like PRISM and the buffering software like Tempera in order to access the communications of those who mean us harm. What we need to ensure, of course, as society, that we do not allow the access of those who are not warranted to be, who are not under suspicion. National security is this new word of God, you know, it's kind of the alternative of how the church was in the Dark Ages, in the medieval ages, where it was saying, you know, we can't possibly tell you, this information is so important that we can't possibly tell you about it. Um, you just have to trust us with, with complete blind faith that, uh, that, it's, that it's kept secret for the, in the interest of national security. Well, all, all of his historic precedent shows that people in power don't just keep information secret for uh, the public good, they keep it secret for the private good as well. <laughs>I think the debate in the United Kingdom is still very immature. On the one hand, you have wild scare stories being spread by some of the civil liberties lobbies about mass surveillance, for example. On the other, you have still quite a few people who are terrified of the idea of discussing any of this in public. We've got to grow up and we've got to have a debate. Parliament, in the end, is going to have to legislate over uh, communications data, uh, whether Parliament is satisfied with the legislation that regulates interception, is it strong enough? These are things that need debate in a democracy. We need to really change the way we view whistleblowers. I mean, people have, uh, people come uh, into the public domain and want to blow the whistle for different reasons. And some of them can be really petty or vindictive or vengeful or very personal. That's kind of irrelevant. What, what's important is the content of the information that they're coming forward with. And the big deciding factor about it is, in the, is what's in the public interest. So we need to have a law that really respects whistleblowers who expose information that needs to be put into the public domain, that exposes abuses of power or injustice or corruption or uh, maladministration. We have to remember that those individuals that are handling that information, we trust them with that. Can we not also trust them to have the right judgment and certain circumstances in which there would be a public interest defence for them disclosing that information? Um, at present, that doesn't exist, and we would very much like to see a review of that. Um, additionally, that any protection in this country is extended to those that are working within the security service or armed forces. We're in a democracy. We have a parliament. In the United States, there is a Congress. That Congress has uh, uh, committees. Uh, the whistleblower can go there. In the United Kingdom, the whistleblower uh, can go to a parliamentary committee and go to the Oversight Committee and be taken very seriously indeed before you destroy your life by going very public. And those who encourage people to do that, the WikiLeaks, I think are behaving very irresponsibly with other people's lives. Only time will tell the effect that this will have on the wider public. Um, we know that in some cases where the pursuit of a whistleblower has been particularly heavy-handed, that sent a chilling effect across the whole of the public. 
However, we also know that where a whistleblower has had a really dramatic impact on how people consider an issue and actually how they approach an issue, in the long run it can be seen as inspirational. And that's why it's so fascinating to see how Edward Snowden has completely opened up this argument. The United States government is using these strong arm tactics against Edward Snowden and against other governments in order to intimidate and frighten people, to intimidate other governments to not cooperate with whistleblowers and to deter individuals from becoming whistleblowers in the first place. The idea is to cow them into silence, but it won't work because there are enough good people out there who truly and sincerely believe that the public has a right to know wrongdoings that are being committed in its name. You know, they didn't silence Daniel Ellsberg, they haven't silenced Bradley Manning, they won't silence Edward Snowden, and they will not silence others in the future.